The Paris Olympic air taxi is a complete mess, but China is building something that could save it. Two years ago, Volocopter began advertising their Volocity air taxi, claiming they'd release it during the Paris Olympic Games in 2024. But it seems like Parisian bureaucracy was the final boss. As it turns out, designing an autonomous flying machine is easier than getting a Paris permit. However, Volocopter isn't backing out from their goal, and they still claim that Volocity will fly in the sky above Paris during the Olympic Games. Here's everything you need to know. Commercial air taxis are finally here. Volocopter plans to unveil its first functional drones during the 2024 Paris Olympic Games, offering tourists and visitors the first ever flying experience. Some might assume that flying taxis won't be here for the next 10 or more years, but the reality is much different. If we ask Dirk Hoke, the CEO of Volocopter, a German aircraft manufacturer, he'd say, This is happening now. Next year, we fly. That's right. During the Paris 2024 Olympics, Volocopter's Volocity aircraft will carry passengers over the Louvre very cheaply. But what about sound pollution? Well, the Volocity is so quiet, many people can barely hear it taking off. As the hoax so eloquently put it, You will see it, but you will not hear it. I, I think a lot of people missed it yesterday because they didn't hear our vehicle. During the Olympic Games 2024, Volocopter will start with five air taxis, and each will be able to make approximately two flights per hour. That brings the total number of flights for the five Volo cities to 100 a day. About one year ago, Volocopter made their first successful test flight at Le Bourget during the Paris Air Show, and people couldn't believe EV tolls could be so quiet. The German startup built 12 drones outfitted with 18 rotors. Each pair of rotors is powered by a single battery, which means there are nine batteries in total. They have a range of 35 kilometers and can reach an altitude of 500 meters propelled at maximum speed of 110 kilometers per hour. The company plans to smash that like button just like you should if you haven't done so already. But no, in all seriousness, Volocopter has a plan to use electric vertical takeoff and landing drones or EV tolls to connect five major hubs that tourists will frequent during the Olympics. The first is the Paris Heliport Vertiport and the Austerlitz Urban Vertiport in the heart of Paris. On the outskirts of Paris, there would be Le Bourget Airport Vertiport and Charles de Gaulle Airport Vertiport, and on the other end of Paris, the Saint Cyr Suburban Vertiport. They were planning to serve three different routes among these five major hubs. ADP Group wanted to test the Paris region with the first route going from Charles de Gaulle Airport to Le Bourget. Usually, this route would take around two hours, but with velocity, that time is reduced to only 20 minutes, flying comfortably with zero emissions. The second is from the Paris Vertiport to the saint cyr le airfield, and the third one would join the Paris Vertiport and the Quai d'Austerlitz. Because the third route would be the only one into Paris, ADP wants Volocity to fly over the Seine River, removing any unnecessary risk. Meanwhile, UK fighter jet and helicopter pilot Paul Stone has been testing Volocity and has been responsible for training experienced helicopter pilots and fixed-wing pilots to fly the electric drone. The good news about this EV toll is that it's controlled through a center stick and a very simple instrument panel. According to Stone, The good news is it's very simple to fly. It has a very clever digital flight control system. In other words, Volocity is much simpler to fly than a modern-day helicopter. In addition, Volocopter's competitor, Autoflight, will also unveil its air taxi during the Olympic Games. Both drones can accommodate one person because of the limits of battery technology. Now, you might be wondering how much a ride on Volocity will cost. Well, according to initial estimates, they plan ticket prices to range between 3 and 4 euros for every kilometer flown. However, then the CEO said this during an interview with the Wall Street Journal. How much is it going to cost? <laughs> the last one I cannot answer you because we didn't agree with our partners yet. We're still in discussion. So that's settled. This means that if you go to Paris for the Olympic Games, you could download an app and hover over Paris in your private little air taxi, right? Not quite. Paying three to four euros per kilometer means that the 25 kilometer trip from Charles de Gaulle Airport to Paris Center would cost you approximately 100 euros. That's for one person. Not only is Volocopter limited by the number of passengers they can carry, but they're also limited by the number of flights they can make every hour. This means the project will be a niche tourist experience available only to a tiny sliver of the population. But that's precisely Volocopter's goal. Now, if Volocopter can send their Volocities to Paris, they would still need to get certification from local authorities in time. 
and so far, there are no such certifications in sight. Parisians hoped their City of Light would be the first in the world to experiment with EV toll air taxis for the Summer Olympics, but the Paris City Council said no. They rejected the project, saying it was absurd and environmentally unsound. They probably saw what happened with the autonomous robocabs in San Francisco and said, we don't need drones with cones on their windshields in Paris. But Volocopter is still hopeful. They believe that Volocity will fly in the skies over Paris for the Olympic Games this year while awaiting certification from the European Aviation Safety Agency. However, Paris has bigger plans for these EV tolls. In the long term, the Paris region wants to use EV tolls for emergencies. The bureaucrats that denied Volocopter its permits said that they have a bigger plan for the future of EV tolls. During the Olympic Games, they will test the usefulness of these flying taxis. If the taxis are successful, then the city of Paris intends to use EV tolls to quickly deliver organs for transplants. But other manufacturers aren't waiting for old Parisian bureaucrats to catch up. They are quickly jumping on the trend, so countries like the US, China, and Brazil are coming up with their very own autonomous flying drones. Approximately one year ago, Supercar Blondie shared the world's first flying car on her official YouTube channel. Xpong X2 Flying Taxi completed its first successful test flight, and if you ask me, I think this one has a better, sleek, and futuristic design compared to that of Volo City. After a three-hour charge, you could fly the aircraft for about 35 minutes. The presenter said that the X2 will turn into the world's first flying car by 2024, but so far, nothing has come of it. Uber has spent millions of dollars trying to create the world's first functional air taxi for the masses. Hyundai, Uber's business partner, created the EV toll air taxi capable of flying at altitudes of between 300 and 700 meters. The personal air vehicle, or PAV, would carry four passengers and reach speeds of around 180 miles per hour for 60 mile trips. But after they've restructured, the project fell through and Uber is no longer in the game for building the world's first flying drone, at least not that we know of. China, on the other hand, is intensely focused on creating the first flying taxi for the mass market. Autonomous flying taxis were approved for mass production in China one month ago. Ehung Holdings Limited created the EH216S drone capable of flying itself. Ehung already listed the drone for sale on Taobao, Alibaba's online marketplace. The price of the unit is 2.4 million yuan or $332,000 and it could reach speeds of up to 130 kilometers per hour with a maximum range of 30 kilometers on a single charge. So, companies looking to build the world's first air taxi services and airport shuttles and promote the rising trend of aerial tourism can do so for around $300,000 domestically. Unfortunately, individuals can't yet buy the aircraft for themselves, but as the company builds more and more takeoff and landing sites, you will be able to charter a flight almost effortlessly. I guess Volocity has a fiercer competitor they need to pay attention to. Here's another video people enjoyed watching. This is AI Exposed, demystifying the world of artificial intelligence one video at a time.